Hey everyone, welcome to It Tastes Different Gaming Appetizers. And what are we talking about this time? Well, we got some news for Final Fantasy XIV. Right now, the Final Fantasy XIV Fan Fest is going on in Los Angeles, I believe. And so today they had some announcements. And uh, we're just going to go over basically some of the highlights of what they announced at the Fan Fest. Um, one of the big ones is a new expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Dawn Trail is what it's called. Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. Um, this takes place uh, basically after the end of Inwalker. Um, so Inwalker pretty much closes up the uh, uh, story arc uh, for the Hydaelyn and the uh, Zodiac uh, story arcs for that game and that's basically concluded those story arcs and so this is basically putting final fantasy 14 into a new story arc starting with uh dawn trail so they showed off a trailer uh cgi trailer for it kind of showing off a, a boat heading towards a new location the new location is i'm going to try to do the name here it's yoke terrell um Hopefully I said that correctly, but <laughs> basically it's a new uh, uh, island, a new location. Uh, it's west of e Eorzea and home to many cities uh, that live along nature, meaning that we won't see a lot of the, uh, you know, probably more like nature centric uh, cities and landscapes and stuff uh, than Eorzea, which has a lot of, uh, they have a lot of nature, but also a lot of like machinery and stuff like that, um, that go along with it. So basically, there's a lot that they uh, announced about this game um, being or about this expansion uh, being that the level cap will go to 100. Uh, two new jobs they show or they uh, talked about didn't really reveal much about the job titles, but they did say they'll have one melee uh, DPS and one ranged DPS uh, uh, job, new dungeons, new gears. Uh, new gear and recipes, uh, new variant dungeons, new alliance raids, new eight player raids, new ultimate raids, uh, the Plu Plu. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right. That's the new race of people that live on that island. Uh, PVP updates, Blue Mage updates, uh, Hillebrand adventures. So new Hillebrand adventures, uh, new deep, new plans for deep dungeons, gold saucer updates, uh, Eyeglasses will be added to the game as equipable gear along with headgear. Uh, two, uh, two, die, uh, two dies per gear piece. So they're adding a new uh, die system where you can basically mix. Uh, it's, what it sounds like is you can take a piece of armor and apply two pieces of die to it. So you could have like, um, you know, it in a, a various, you know, like one half of it's uh, black and the other half's white or something like that, right? Um, as an example. So that sounds pretty cool. Uh, furnishing limit increases, uh, whiteboard strategy board for planning, uh, duties, raid strategies and more. So it's almost like, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's like a planning board for you and your guild to like, be able to strategize on like a whiteboard type thing within the game. Um, so they're also with patch 6.5, uh, they're going to have a, a free trial extension, which will include Stormblood. Currently, the um, I think right now it just includes Heaven's Ward, but now Stormblood will be a part of that. So you can play up to Stormblood. Um, and one of the big things, too, is a graphical update. So uh, there's going to be a graphical update to the game. Uh, they say uh, the team is emphasizing screen wide aesthetic appeal versus changes to to individual characters. Uh, the the update will affect near everything in the game, including shadows, materials, characters, UI and more. Uh, it would also include high resolution textures and shadows. So. You know, this visual update could look, uh, you know, the game art looks nice. I mean, you know, this is just continuing to bring the game into modern times right uh these mmos they've got you know they did the same thing with wow wow did a, a graphical update and you know a lot of these older games try to keep up the graphics by updating their engine and updating the textures and various things like that redoing things to keep them fresh right especially popular mmos such as final fantasy 14 and wow and these other ones that have you know stood the test of time still have millions of players playing them 
Uh, they've got to keep up with content and graphical updates to make sure that people are still invested in playing them. And one of the big uh, pieces of news, so that sounds really cool. And then one of the other big pieces of news is Final Fantasy XIV is coming to Xbox. Xbox Series X and S is going to release in spring of 2024. So not much, you know, about what, uh, less than a year from now uh, or close to a year from now. Uh, we'll have it on Xbox finally, right? I think I know a lot of people out there have been wanting, have been talking about wanting this game on on Xbox and now it's finally going to happen. So that's great. That just brings more people into the game and uh, gives those that maybe just have an Xbox the ability to, you know, uh, play Final Fantasy 14 if they've ever been interested but just didn't have anything to play it with. Now you have the opportunity here coming up soon. They are doing an open uh, or a beta. I'm not sure if it's an open beta or a closed beta, but they are doing a beta, which I'm sure beta signups, if they're not going on now, will be going on soon where you can sign up and then test out the game on Xbox and everything like that. One of the cool things before we go to these guys, um, one of the interesting things I should say is if you watch, you can watch the uh, Final Fantasy 14 uh, showcase where they showed off the expansion. They also showed off uh, Phil Spencer coming onto the stage with Yoshi P, the director of Final Fantasy 14, uh, talking about the uh, Final Fantasy 14 coming to Xbox, right? Uh, during that, the CEO of Square Enix comes out and talks as well as coming to the game. And Phil Spencer mentions during that that, you know, they're excited to work closely on this coming to Xbox as well as future Square Enix games coming to Xbox. And the reason why that's interesting is because if, if anybody's, you know, the gamer out there and loves Square Enix games, you'll notice that a lot of Square Enix games typically don't come to Xbox. They usually come to PlayStation. Um, you know, we got Final Fantasy seven remake, Final Fantasy 16, Octopath Traveler two, you know, as an example of some games that did not come to Xbox at all. Right. And we've had some lower releases, some smaller released RPGs, uh, that have come to PlayStation that have not come to Xbox. So it sounds like Microsoft is trying to, uh, work with Square Enix to get a little bit more of a uh, closer relationship with them to be able to release more games on the Xbox, which is great because, you know, if you don't have an Xbox, there's been some great Square Enix games that have only come out to PlayStation. You know, for, for us, it really doesn't matter because we have PlayStation, so we can pick them up there. But for the people that don't, you know, it sucks that they miss out on these titles that I don't know why Square wouldn't put them on Xbox, but it seems like Microsoft is trying to, you know, get a closer relationship to Square uh, to be able to release these games. So could we see Final Fantasy Remake come to Xbox or maybe Remake 2 or, you know, Final Fantasy 16 come to Xbox? You know, it's a possibility now. And, um, you know, apparently during the uh, conference as well, they said that basically they were saying, and this may all be just, you know, uh, in industry jargon jargon as far as we know but they were saying basically final fantasy 14 coming to xbox was all because of phil spencer that's what the director and the ceo were saying so it sounds like phil in the back end was fighting very hard to get uh final fantasy 14 onto xbox as well as having a better relationship with square enix to be able to put more game square enix games onto the xbox so hey you know, however you're going to do it, you know, whatever works, either giving them some money or whatever the case may be. That's great for Xbox players out there in the community in the gaming community as a whole to be able to play these games that come out to the various things. But those were some of the things that came, you know, those are the big highlights that uh, were shown off during the Final Fantasy Fan Fest. So let's go around and see what everybody thinks of everything. Uh, Shane, let's go to you, buddy. Let's go to you first. What do you think of all these news announcements? I don't give a this is awesome news. Uh, it really is. So uh, let's let's unpack it kind of how you went with it here. So Final Fantasy fourteen online going to Xbox. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, it really is. I don't know. I don't know what fan base they'll draw in on the Xbox side of it. Um, but I hope it does. Uh, I, I I played some of the fourteen. Um, I have this thing about buying a game and then paying them every month to play my game. That's to me is a load of horse crap. 
but you know, it's just me. I'm silly. Uh, but still it's really cool. Um, now I was going to ask, did it say anywhere in there? Cause I don't remember seeing it. Is it going to be uh cross platform Xbox? I can I buy it on Xbox. I can play it on my PC as well. I, I don't think there's cross save. There is cross, cross play. Save, that's the word. Okay. Uh, there is cross play. So you will be able yeah, to play with figured, uh, PlayStation users and, and people on PC. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's fine. But, uh, you know, I mean, Nick was describing how he played it on his PS4, I think it was at the time, and how well it worked for them. So hopefully they did that same kind of love for the Xbox. Uh, uh, so I, 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 I'm excited to give it a try. Uh, again, uh, I won't continue it because, like I said, I don't want to pay for a game and then pay somebody monthly for the game. But uh, it does sound cool. I would like to be able to get into it, but it's that whole problem I have. Uh, and the next part was uh, future games, Square Enix games coming to Xbox. Uh, I love the idea. Uh, Sony, Sony has basically been holding on to Square Enix's uh, shopping cart for a while and not letting it go for many, many things. Um, uh, especially the RPG side of it. I mean, we've had some Square Enix stuff come to Xbox. But none of it that I can remember for a while has been an RPG. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Outriders was uh, Square Enix, if I remember correctly. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. No, that was uh, on Xbox. And that was a fantastic game. If you haven't tried it, Guardians of the Galaxy on Xbox is fantastic. Uh, but a lot the RPGs have been pretty much non-existent. Uh, Seven Remake. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get it on Xbox, but it would be really nice. I mean, we've played it. We loved it. It's a great game. Uh, filler fantasy is what I call it because there's a little too much filler, but still a fantastic game. Um, Octopath Traveler, it's another great game. So hopefully, and hopefully it is true that Phil is doing his job and he is, he is you know, he's catering a little bit over there at uh, Square Enix, buying some lunches, you know, trying to get some games to the Xbox fans, and they need to. Uh, they really, really need to. Uh, Xbox isn't known for their RPG database. Uh, they they did really good at the beginning of the 360 life cycle, cycle, but you know it really fell off as well. So you know they really need to pick that up. Uh, I love the idea of more RPGs coming to Xbox. Uh, I just I just don't know which games we're going to get. If we're going to get the Final Fantasies, we're missing out on. Uh, I mean, we're getting 14, but are we ever going to get 7? Are we going to get 16? Uh, are future iterations going to come to Xbox uh, at the same time as Sony? Because, you know, as we've all talked, it doesn't seem to make sense to hold a franchise like that back on a single console. Um you know, granted, you know, Nintendo, the Switch couldn't handle Final Fantasy 16 or 15 even. Uh, but, you know, you know, it just makes no sense to hold it back on a single platform. But, you know, hopefully now we're going to start seeing maybe we'll get an announcement. Seven remake is going to come bundled with uh, seven remake part two, whatever the hell they call that one. Uh, I doubt it, but yeah, that would be really nice. Uh, you know, and it's just money in Square Enix's pocket. I don't know what Sony's paying for exclusive exclusivity, but, uh, you know, now that Phil is probably, you know, he's opening his purse strings to him. Maybe we'll start getting some of that final fantasy seven love, maybe a final fantasy eight remake hint, hint. Uh, but you know, it's, it's good news all the way around, you know, Square Enix dropping games on Xbox is just, it's nothing but good news. Even if you're not a fan, still good news. All right, Pat, since you're the Final Fantasy expert and didn't realize Sid was a different man in every game, <laughs> what do you think about it, bud? Now the more people can experience the nightmare that is the Mog Station. <laughs> so, but no, I, I love Final Fantasy 14. I, I played it. Um, never, I played it quite a bit early on. Um, I played it before they destroyed it and rebuilt it, and it didn't really come back because I was ruined by the previous experience. 
Um, but Nick talked me back into playing it once, you know, once him and I met and we started hanging out. Good game. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of time in my day to day life to play more MMOs, but um, it is a great game. Uh, and it is a very deep game. There is a lot to do in Final Fantasy 14. Half the stuff I completely forgot about until Nick's rattling off a list of new this, new that. And I'm like, crap, I forgot all about those and that. And so many classes. I mean, so many you know jobs and things like that to try and play and you could do them all with a single character and things like that you know it's it's really great game there's just a lot of depth to it um and now it's coming to xbox you know uh i'm glad to hear that phil spencer was key in bringing that to xbox you know i mean i think phil spencer is probably the best thing to happen to microsoft you know when he came to them for in a very 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 long time if not ever you know I mean, he's done nothing but write that ship, bring it back to, you know, being profitable and basically prevented it from reading its own demise. It kind of really sounds like, you know, it was taking a nosedive, um, you know, and, and coming to Xbox, good news. I mean, it's been on PlayStation for a while. I never played the PlayStation version. Um, I know one of our other friends, Russ, plays on the PlayStation. That's where he played it from. Um, and, you know, and then we i've got a pc so i play on the pc um so you know no so i never had a reason to play it on the console and i never had a reason to play with the controller but nick says the controller port's really good for it so i might have to try it out maybe just depends Uh, because sometimes i don't feel like sitting in my desk chair office chair i feel rather sit in my recliner and play in front of my big tv so i might have to give it a shot on the xbox and see what it looks like Uh, my only ever complaint about final fantasy 14 is the mog station (laughs) it's the most cumbersome thing about that I remember trying to sign up for the original Final Fantasy 14 before they they destroyed it and created a Realm Reborn. And it was like, buy Krista with it, you know, and you can you have to buy Krista in these chunks. And it was more than a subscription. And you're like, well, I have Krista left over. And, you know, you got to keep loading Krista on your on your Mog Station account. So you're, when it comes time to renew, it'll pull the Krista out. If not, you would subscription would lax. You know, they made changes that now where you're just paying outright and it's just deducting from your credit card or whatever, you know, every month. So that's changed and it's, it's gotten better. The mock station is a million times better than what it used to be, but it's still, still quite clunky. Um, the Dawn trail expansion from what I read and what I saw is supposed to be a lot more colorful and upbeat and light and less dark, like than the, than the current ones have been. So, but I like the magic and the magic tech and stuff like that. Uh, I like that kind of aspect of it. So hopefully you know, the little more upbeat and stuff like that still doesn't take away some of that technological side of Final Fantasy that I really enjoy. Because those are probably my favorite dungeons and raids is the stuff with the Magitech and stuff like that, the m- robots and machines and all that. So I really like that part of the game. Um, you know, the game is massive. Is all I can say. You would spend hours, days, weeks, and months and not hit on everything in the game. There's just so much to it. So if you're if you got that itch for an MMO, you really have to try this one. There's just no there's no doubt about it. you need to be playing it and trying it. I mean, I imagine if you're an MMO fan and you played WoW or or any of the other ones, you've probably played this one. But if you haven't, you should give Final Fantasy 14 um uh, the chance. It's a really great game. Um, like I said, don't let the Mog Station turn you off because that's the first thing your first foray into, you know, the whole Square Enix is pay to play you know monthly subscription thing um but it is great check out the trailer if you haven't checked it out uh you know so the video looked really cool it looks like more colorful and they even said it's supposed to be more colorful more bright experience and not quite as dark and downtrodden as it has been a little bit you know um i love the game i wish i had more time to play it you know i've not gotten to play hardly any of this expansion at all i own it <laughs> but i haven't got to play it so um and shoot, we should have went to Fan Fest in Las Vegas. Can't believe we missed it. Final Fantasy fourteen Fan Fest was in was in Las Vegas this year. We missed it, darn it. Maybe one of these years we'll go to it. Um I I can't say enough good things about Final Fantasy fourteen. You have to check it out. This is all good news. And I do hope they bring more Final Fantasy games to Xbox. I mean, I'm nothing against PlayStation, but you know, it would be nice if we got more of this. And and I've always heard Square Enix doesn't come to Xbox with a lot of their games because 
they don't make any money. But I find that kind of hard to believe when like Koei Tecmo, you know, all these other Japanese publishers are on Xbox, you know, and they're making money, you know. Um, and I, I really honestly believe that the, the reason behind it is more Sony than anything. Cause Sony is just probably paying them off to not come to Xbox. Uh, because I, I, every time I ever find an article, it's, you know, yeah, we released this game four years later on Xbox and it didn't sell. Well, of course it didn't. Everybody that wanted to play it played it when it came out four years ago on the PlayStation. Cause they couldn't get it on Xbox, you know? And all the people who did pick it up on Xbox were the people who never got to play it on PlayStation or the Knicks of the world who have to own it on everything that it comes out on. So, uh, so it sounds like so. So what you can guarantee here is that Nick owns Final Fantasy 14 on PlayStation and PC, and then eventually he will own it on Xbox <laughs> because unfortunately you have to buy it on each console or each platform. So if you want to play it on PC, you got to buy it on PC. If you want to play it on PlayStation, you got to buy it there. And if you want it on Xbox and it comes out there, you have to buy it there. So in the end, you couldn't own three copies of this game if you play it in different areas. So, um, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's their right to not be, I don't think any, there's not very many companies out there besides Microsoft to allow you to buy, and they don't always do it, allow you to buy the game one time and play it on PC and Xbox. There's very few of that. So, it's not like that's been a trend and now it's going away. It's never been a trend and it's a very rarity to see that happen. So um, I might actually try it on Xbox to see. I'm My brain says, how is this going to work, right? Hot bars out the wazoo. How does this work with controller? But plenty of people on PlayStation have been doing it. And plus, you can plug a controller into your, your PC and do it. So, you know, what about you, Nick, man? Are you excited for the changes? Are you ready for the expansion? I, I am not ready for the expansion because I need to complete the last expansion. Uh, again, like you said, I I own the you know, the last expansion. I mean, all the expansions, and uh, I haven't had time to play it yet. So it's unfortunate. The, the unfortunate thing is just not having enough time. There's too many games, and I love Final Fantasy 14. I think it's a great MMO. I enjoy playing it. I got several. I mean, I got one character. I've got several jobs that are you know, up there, if not close to level cap, um, done plenty of the dungeons and, and story beats and everything like that in the game. But there gets a time where you just, you want to play other things, right? When you play an MMO, it's kind of like, that's all you're playing, right? Is the MMO. You don't have time for anything else because you have to keep up with the content. Um, but Final Fantasy, you know, just like any MMO, you can come in later, right? Um, you can come back and forth as you, as you please. And and continue where you left off and everything like that. Uh, I really want to get through the last expansion and be ready for Dawn Trail when it comes out. It looks really cool. I like the new area. I like the colorfulness, you know. I mean, uh, the last expansion is really good. But yeah, it did get pretty dark and, you know, dreary. So it's kind of nice to mix things up with a more colorful landscape. I'm sure things will start to get, you know... Uh, dark and dreary as the as the story arc continues on and everything um, maybe we'll have like some uh the empire or something like that like invading this tropical island you know and then you got all the magitech coming in and everything like that that'd be kind of cool but um you know who knows what they're going to do with it but yeah i mean th that's one of the thing one of the things i i do really like about this game too about final fantasy 14 is being able to create one character and play all of the classes or all the jobs, right? You can switch them up. You can max out every single job and every single uh, gathering um, uh, craft with just one character, right? You just switch them out. And so uh, the thing I love about that is being able to like, you know, if you're done playing, you know, maybe you started out, I started out as a tank and then I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I got that to max and played it quite a bit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm done tanking. I want to, I don't want to just, hit things and make them hurt with, you know, I want to be a DPS. So, you know, heaven's ward came out at that time and they had the machinist and I really wanted to play the machinist. So I unlocked that job and then switched over to machinist, which is ranged DPS and played that to max level, you know, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I switched off of that when shadow, uh, uh, when Stormblood came out and, and, uh, became a samurai and played that one. Right. And then I also had, uh, leveled, a lot of the other classes too that you can play as the game in the game as well. Um, but you know, those were my main three. So I went from range DPS to just melee DPS, but 
you know, that was just fun to be able to create, just to keep my one character and continue switching jobs or switching what I want to be. Like, you know, if I went decided one day, I just want to start being a healer and, 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 and heal everybody. I could just switch over to the healer class and become a healer. Right. <laughs> and that's cool. You don't have to create a new character, right? You just continue with that same character. So it really makes you feel like your characters. It, 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 I wish a lot more MMOs did that because it really makes you really feel an investment in the character that you've created. Because instead of just creating like, you know, you look at your character list and you have like, you know, and wow, you might have like 20 characters in Final Fantasy, you have probably one. Right. And that one has and you look at, you know, you can go to their their menu and look at all their uh, classes and you have like all these classes leveled out or, you know, uh, in their 40s and 50s or whatever level of all these different classes that you can uh, or jobs that you can change to. Um, And then, of course, you might you might have to buy more retainers so you can fit all the damn uh, armor sets and everything for all the classes that you're playing. But still. It's all there, right? So yeah, Don Trail sounds really cool. I'm I'm excited to uh, play through that when it comes out, and it's great that uh, Final Fantasy 14 is finally coming to Xbox. I know there's a lot of people out there that were wanting this for a very long time, and and we're finally getting it, and that more games are come from Square Enix are coming to Xbox. Um, so that's that's great. I mean, you know, because like. Like I said, for us, it really doesn't matter because we have PlayStations and stuff, but not everybody has, you know, some people just have an Xbox and it sucks as gamers for them to miss out on great games, great RPGs from Square Enix that just come to the PlayStation and don't come to anything else. So it's like, again, you know, kind of like what Shane said, I don't, you know, the Xbox is not big in Japan. We know that it doesn't sell well, but it does here in the US, right? Uh, you know, Sony everywhere is still number one, but Xbox does really well in the U.S. Um, so those people that only have Xbox, especially here in the U.S., would love those Square Enix games to come to the Xbox so they can enjoy them as well. Right. Um, you know, before they might think, well, I have to go buy a PlayStation. But now with this, uh, not necessarily with this, but if they start bringing out more Square Enix games that you see coming out in the future, you see that Xbox is also their logo is also there. Uh, people might be like, OK, cool. I can just keep my Xbox and play these these awesome RPGs that are coming out. Uh, so that's great. It's great for everybody. It's great for gamers, you know, uh, especially Final Fantasy 14 come to Xbox. That's just is going to expand the community. I'm sure there's a lot of Xbox players that have been wanting this for a long time um that are going to be excited that they finally get to play final fantasy 14 on the xbox so i think it'll draw in a pretty large community i mean the game already has a large community so if you can you know bring this out to people that can't access it either way either they don't have a pc or a playstation and can't access it in either fashion but they have an xbox now you have the potential to bring them into and like shane said that's just more money for square enix right they're like cool i mean why not right <laughs> Why not bring these games and a game like Final Fantasy 14 and other uh, Square Enix games to to Xbox? It's just more money in their pocket. So, yeah, and a Final Fantasy 8 remake. <laughs> and a Final Fantasy 8 remake. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else you want to say about this? I mean, it's all good news for everybody. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, fantastic news all the way around. And uh, hopefully the good news continues with uh, some, you know, Final Fantasy on Xbox. Yep. Yeah. Good game. You gotta check it out. If you like Final Fantasy, this fits right into there. It's that JRPG oh, yeah. feel and an MMO. You know, there's the Umbral Error quest. I know they've truncated them down quite a bit now, but man, there's so much story rolled up into those quests. Oh my god, there's so much. And they mix what I one of the good things that Final Fantasy does better than most MMOs is the way they roll their stories into dungeons and raids. Because at first, when I came across a raid in Final Fantasy 14 was through a storyline. I'm like. Holy crap, how am I going to get in a raid to be able to continue this Umbral storyline? And there's Raid Finder for the story level. So you get to you get to experience the story raid without worrying about too much about, you know, you get to see the raid dungeon, but it's it's kind of I and I'm not sure. I didn't play enough of the raids because I've not been in a big enough, you know, guild or anything. But it felt like the raid was almost dumbed down to where I didn't have to worry too much about damage and I can enjoy the story. I think it is. Nick, is the, is the, is the story level raid dungeons dumbed down or is it the raid that you get in without the story? 
Yeah, they're kind of dumbed down for the story progression because the real raids are a, a lot harder and, and take, you know, they're they're like your regular raids where you have to kind of converse with your guild and make sure everybody's on the same page going through things, right? Uh, so they're not quite like that, but it is a cool experience because a lot of people in MMOs don't get to experience raids, right? Um, because it takes a lot to play a raid, but it's cool that they do that with dungeons and with raids. They mix them into the storylines and the story. Uh, the story arcs and everything are really good. Like the really good writing, they're very interesting. So, I mean, you know, some MMOs don't, you know, they have great mechanics and stuff, but the story's kind of boring. But Final Fantasy XIV's always been really good about uh, keeping you engaged in the story. And so you know all the characters, you know what's going on. Like you're never confused at any point. You know what's going on and who's playing what role. And, you know, they do a really good job of that. So. But anything else from you guys? No, sir. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Let us know down in the comments below. Are you excited to see Final Fantasy 14 come to Xbox? And are you going to sign up for the uh, beta? I think, uh, I don't know if you have to do the Xbox Insider. I'm not quite sure how you get onto the beta, but I'm sure there's some probably some information out there on how to do so. So if you just search for it, um, I don't even know if it's available yet, but I'm sure it's probably going to be available soon because if they're going to come out in the spring, I would assume this fall is when they probably want to start the beta process. So I would imagine it's going to be coming up soon. Uh, but what do you think about Final Fantasy 14 coming to Xbox? And have you played Final Fantasy 14 before? Uh, um, let us know down in the comments below. You know, what's your favorite thing about Final Fantasy 14 if you like that game? Uh, what's your favorite MMO? I'm really interested to to. Uh, to know what your favorite MMO is. You know, everyone's got their favorite ones. I think 14 is probably one of my favorites, um, but there's a, uh, but it's not the only MMO I play, right? So <laughs> there's definitely other ones I enjoy and I enjoy playing. I think I enjoy playing 14 the most, but there are other uh, uh, MMOs that I also enjoy playing. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Hit the bell notification to stay up to date with new videos that we do all the time, and we'll see you next time. See ya.